Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Ashland Middle School for American Legion playoff action. It's post 77, the home team, Ashland, and post 8 from Andover, Massachusetts. The winner will play on and go to the States. Loser might have to play another game. Game time temperature is 89 degrees. This is Larry Sacklad doing play-by-play -play tonight, assisted by Todd Carter, who will be offering some color. Jack Kimberly on the camera, and Ben Buckus giving us another camera view. Starting pitcher for Ashland tonight is Sean Babineau. I want you to pay attention when he's got runners on base. He's got the nastiest pickoff move I've seen from a youth pitcher, and I've seen a whole lot of them. Yeah, you were saying uh, something pretty interesting earlier about uh, him smelling fear. What was the exact quote? Yeah, I was talking to Babineau earlier in the game and asking him what his thoughts were about or did he have a trigger to pick over to first base to grab a runner. And I asked him whether it was lead length or whether he spotted a runner tilting one way or another. Uh, he said, no, neither of those two. He asked me, uh, you remember getting a steal signal when you played ball? You remember that anxiety you feel in the belly? And he picks up on that. Sometimes a hitter will do something, or the runner will do something that's really subtle, and he'll go over and pick over. So keep a close eye on him with runners on base. Got Sean Jewett behind the plate, Lewis Rossi, third base, Jackson Hornung at shortstop, Ronan Bates at second base, Zach Pesson at first base. From right to left, Ben Thomas, Brad Seymour, and Jake Obed. The DH tonight will be Tom Onzi from Hopkinton. The umpires have gone over the ground rules. Babineau has completed his warm-up tosses. It's time to play ball, fellas. Each team has their own little rah-rah cheer. Haven't done all this post-77 games. It's sevens. I don't know what Andover's is, but if you remember an old Red Sox catcher named Harrigan, I forget his first name. It'll come to mind in a second. Uh, this coach here, Joe I am Brolio, coached. Harrigan. So Brian Guerrero, number 13, is leading off. Strike one. It's a ground ball over to the right side. Pesson gives it and touches the bag himself for one out. Post eight is not lacking for size on the corners. Got Riley up. Mike Riley. No relation to the famous Major League umpire. And he grounds over to Ronan Bates at second base. He throws the first two out. Left fielder is... Kali Zokos. Called strike. The Ashland bench is a little more animated tonight than they usually are. Foul ball. Babino's up in the count 0 2. A nasty changeup. Jewett throws down to Pesson. That's the end of the top of the first inning. Heading to the bottom of the first inning. 
We're heading to the bottom of the first inning for post 77, leading off Jake Obed. Batting second, Ronan Bates. Batting third, the shortstop, Jackson Hornung. Number 34, Ben Thomas hitting cleanup. First baseman, Zach Pesson in the five hole. Third baseman, Louis Rossi. Tom Onzi is the DH tonight for Sean Babino. Catcher, Sean Jewett, called strike. Brad Seymour is patrolling center field. It's one strike on Jake Obed. He pops it up to the right side, out of play. Gallette on the mound. Got Obed down 0-2. Ground ball up the middle to the shortstop. Throws Jake out. One down. Up next is Ronan Bates, number nine. Great athlete, former catcher, third baseman. He's going to University of Massachusetts at Lowell. And he's going to try and walk on there. Why not? The ball, the breaking pitch. Gallette seems very deliberate out there as he goes through his motion. Ball fouled away. You can pick up his feet, Gallette, and he seems like he waits to get set before he goes downhill. Very deliberate and a little unusual. There's a fly ball in the left center field, uh, right center field, excuse me. Right fielder is under it and makes the grab. Two down. Mr. All Everything, Jackson Hornung. At least he thinks so. The shortstop. Going to be a junior this year at Ashland High. Played all the games as a sophomore last year and did quite well. There's a breaking pitch by Gallette. Strike one. So he's got a little bit of heat, Gallette, and he's got a little bit of funk to his curveball, which he just poured over the plate for a strike. Jackson down 0-2. It's a fastball to second base. Second base and picks it up, throws the first, and that's the end of the first inning. We're heading to the top of the second. Second inning. Sean Babineau had a clean inning in his first, threw seven pitches, got three outs. A little meeting on the mound, a little rah rah action. We get the cleanup hitter. Selleman, another big kid. Lefty lefty matchup. The called strike on a breaking pitch. Quite different deliveries between Babino and Gallette. It's ball outside, one one. Here's a ball hit to right field. Going to drop in for a hit. Thomas throws it in to Bates. We get the first hit of the ball game. Game started exactly on time, 5.30. The game time temperature was 89 degrees. Not where I'm sitting in the shade, but out on the field, 89 degrees. Very warm day today. Oh, it was better than the flash flood yesterday. That was uh, Babado's dummy move. And runner was back easy. 
He's now trying to calculate his move. Strike called. 0-1. Babino just senses. That's how he goes for his move. He told me he doesn't want. As you saw, what a what a move he had. That was a close play. I wish the Andover coach would get out of my field of view. But he's working, and I'm just is a bunt foul, bunt attempt foul. Counts two and zero, oh. two and one. Excuse me. And Sean Babineau told me, you know, if he doesn't like the guy over there for whatever his reason, he doesn't like his looks, he doesn't like his pants, he doesn't like anything, he'll just throw over and get rid of him, as he says. Though so Como is up the first baseman, the big first baseman. That was close. As you can see, his deceptive move. Had to run a leading a little bit. He had to go in hands first. What you always want to do is go hands first to the back of the bag. Counts three and one. No, two and two, excuse me. I'm not so sure why Babineau might worry about that guy first. And that's strike three, breaking pitch. Yeah, he was swinging rather than looking. Any coach will tell you, I'd rather have you go down swinging than admiring the pitcher's pitch. We got number 10, Dillman. Babino missed just up a little high. Little groans from the uh, peanut gallery. The only one that matters here is the home plate umpire filed back behind us. Count is one on one. I don't know whether Sean Babineau has forgot about the guy at first base, but there's a base hit to center field and maybe a hard charge and a throw to second as the runner was playing halfway might have got him but we'll never know so anything on the ground the runners will go anything on the hit on the line they got to freeze it's the D.H. Pena no relation to Tony. That's popped up over to the right side. Passing chasing it. That ball's going to drop foul. New ball for Babineau. Probably getting a little bit of a feel for that ball, but he doesn't rub it up at all. He trusts the umpire with a brand new egg. There's a curve ball, and that ball's fouled away to the right side. Two strikes on Pena. He's thrown two slow pitches for breaking balls. Time to gas him right here. Which he laid off. It's a good take by Pena. Pena was actually after that uh, that foul ball reaching for his hand a little bit. Might have just caught the edge of his finger, so something for Babino to watch. And it's, it's, Pena just was uh, admiring that uh, beautiful pitch from Sean Babino, and sends him back to the pine. So. What I'm noticing from the Andover runner on second base is he does not retreat to the bag and go back and touch it, which I see a lot of uh, high school players do it. 
And ideally, you don't want to go back because you want to give the illusion that you're uh, staying in the same spot, even though you might be shuffling step a little bit to grab that extra half a foot or foot, which might mean a tenth of a second or two tenths of a second if they want to take a, a jump. Babineau a long look to second. Spins off, no throw. He wants Sean Zhua to repeat the signs. He's got a lot of confidence in the young catcher. Ball hit to Bates, over to Pesson. Three outs, and we're heading to the bottom of the second inning. He has to throw down to second and have it around the horn. This broadcast is WACA Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. We're going to the bottom of the second inning. Ben Thomas, the cleanup hitter, gets into the box. Makes a practice hack. Keep an eye on that Andover pitcher with that strange delivery. Just appears to me that he's losing momentum by looking down at the foot and getting ball. Ball's foul. Thomas has been known to go to the other way. Left center, gap, good overall hitter. Or Holliston High. Ball in the dirt. 2-1. Jake Obid taking a little bit of leadership in between innings. Rallied the hitters up and told uh, them all what to expect from Gallette out there. Very smart move on his part. It's nice to get some 4-1-1 on the guy you're going to go up against. Gillette stares in for the sign. Puts his foot down, lets it go. Fouled straight back. Counts 22. Thomas went for that uh, breaking ball that was up high. Still 2-2. Two and two. Get a pretty decent crowd down here tonight. Nice night for a suntan. I'm glad I brought my water. Todd, did you bring your water? Uh, no, but I had plenty before the game, so. I keep looking you over to your right or over to my left, and you're over to my right. I guess it's the my left ear I'm picking up your voice. It counts still. Two and two after a quick mound visit by the catcher. Ball in the dirt. Counts full. Ashley and looking for its first base runner. Ben Thomas has hit the ball all year. I guess that's why he's in the four hole. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. Glip underhands it to first for the first out. Good reaction by Gillette. Zach Pesson, first baseman. Steps into the box. Ball hit off the pitcher, and it's into the left field for a base hit. Pesta takes a turn. Coach Johnson isn't happy about Pesson's helmet as it came off a little bit after he rounded first base. But if Coach Johnson wants to buy him a new helmet, I suppose that's up to him or 
charge the post. Got to score that a single. Lewis Rossi, an accomplished bunter. He may pull it back and lay one down. Showed no signs of doing that. We haven't seen Galette's move because he's only had one base runner that you see right here. Rossi takes a good hack at that, fouls it straight back. Count as one on one. I'm not quite sure whether Galette has any type of rocker step or whether he just starts from a stretch and digs his cleat in, but it is one of the auto deliveries you'll see. Throws a nice, slow breaking ball. Rossi takes for a strike, one and two. Pesson hasn't drawn a throw over there to first base, so we'll see what this kid's got for a move. Pesson takes off. And that's going to ball hit in the gap. And here comes Pesson around third base. Makes the cut. He's being held up by Johnson. He might have had that one beat as the, the cutoff man was way out of position. So now Gallette has got a problem. With one out. Runners on second and third. And the Ashland bench comes alive. Tom Onzi, 2016 graduate of Hopkinton High, DHing tonight, six for 13 on the season. Ball high, tried to rear back for a little extra. And Onzi, being an experienced player, let that one ride. Galette backs off the rubber. Now we're going to have another conference out at the mound. Geez, I could use a iced coffee here, Galette says to the catcher Schmidt. Or something like that. Umpire's going to go up, break up this conference. Takes five steps out. Pirouettes back. I wonder what they give, five or six seconds and they start their march out to the mound? I'm not quite sure. If I get a chance to talk to the umpire later, I'm going to ask him. Pesson shuffling down the line. Onzi lays off the breaking pitch. It's 2-0. and At the youth level, most of the kids are sitting dead red, and they'll leave that curveball alone. Saw Onzi go after that fastball, 2-1. Onzi looking down for the signs from Coach Johnson. Down at third. Gallette looking over at Pesson. He's got a decent lead down there. On the ground. It's a bunt. And that scores the runner. So it's one to nothing. Onzi gave himself up. Sacrifice bunt. Score that one to three. And Rossi moves on to third base. Thanks, Todd. So that may have the Andover pitcher a little rattled. I don't know where he stacks up in their uh, pitching rotation. But he's not overpowering. He hit, does have a decent breaking ball, although it's not a real biting breaking ball. It's more of a rolling breaking ball. Here's Sean Jewett, the catcher. He's my dirt dog player of the year. Ball high. 1-0. Let's see how Gallette deals with a little adversity. He's got a runner in his sights. Sean takes a hack at that one and fouls it straight back. Brad Seymour on that ball. Babineau pacing around the dugout. He wants to get right back out there. But he should be a little patient. Let his team get him some runs some insurance that was a beautiful bump by onzi put it right where he wanted to right up the first baseline 
that's a strike. That slow breaking ball. Jewett's going to get a lot of time behind the plate at Hopkins, excuse me, Holliston High. Spent this year at JV behind a senior. But he's showing me ball in the dirt. Nice block by the catcher, Schmidt. But Jewett has shown me that he's able to block, receive, throw. He can do it all behind the plate. And he went for that high fastball. For the third out at the bottom of the second, we're heading to the top of the third. For number nine, the catcher, Schmidt. No relation to Mike Schmidt from the Phillies. There's a strike in by Babineau. Start Schmidt off with a fastball, lower part of the order. And there's a ball hit to third base to Rossi. Rossi throws over to Pesson. Strike. One down. Two pitches, one out. Coach Johnson has got the uh, game changer there, so he's got the spray chart. Brian Guerrero. Hit the ball over the first baseman, unassisted. In the top of the first. It's a ground ball over to the second baseman. Takes a little crazy hop over to Pesson. Got two down now. I can't ask for a raise. This is really easy. This is the big uh, third baseman, Mike Riley. It is a ball hit to left center, and that's caught by, oh, drops. Dropped right out of the glove of Brad Seymour. Excellent effort. Home play umpire made that call on a drop. That's his responsibility. So we'll see what Riley does over there at first base, whether he's going to take a little lead over there. There's a ground ball to Horning. Three. There's Babineau in to back it up. Very smart pitcher, fielding his position as well as doing the pitching. That ball got past the third baseman, Rossi. But Babineau was right there. So it's first and third. With two out. Will Babineau pick over? Batter called time. I'm trying to pick up whether he looks once or looks twice. Ball low. Kiliosakos. He's the left fielder tonight. There's the pick, and there he's done. See you later. Nasty pickoff move. We see at least one or two a game. Kid's a freak. All right, we're heading to the bottom of the third inning. Schmidt throws the ball down a second, shows a pretty decent arm. We'll see what uh, Ashley in post 77 will do. They got runners in, on base as far as how aggressive they'll be with Mr. Schmidt. Gillette looks in for the sign, winds, fastball, fouled over to the right side. Job, Little ribbing from Coach Johnson to the first base coach as he was able to pick up that foul ball. There's a breaking pitch upstairs, one on one. Oh, Brad Seymour almost made a tremendous catch out in center field. Just came out of his glove. 
There's a strike. But Babineau erased any hopes that uh, Andover had. Just a dynamite pickoff move. The runner did not even get back to the base. The ball was close. We can only judge low and high from our vantage point. We can't judge inside or outside, except if we watch the catcher's hand, and it's real obvious. That looked close. The ball is back to the backstop, and we will score that a strikeout. And uh, I'd give that a wild pitch. So Seymour makes it to first base. Nobody out. Leadoff hitter Jake Obed up. He was hitting some bombs in batting practice. Got some Andover fans behind me, so I don't want to say anything too insulting, but I am a homer after all. Obed takes a rip at that pitch. Gallette has yet to throw over, as I mentioned earlier. So we have no idea what his move is. If he has one at all. Back pick. And he throws it into the outfield. And up to second goes Seymour. Sometimes catchers get a little bit greedy when they see some daylight on a outside pitch to a righty or an inside pitch to a lefty. And uh, they throw the ball away. Kid behind the plate is no Alex Reynolds, I'll tell you that. Second baseman keeping Zemo close. There's a ground ball, slowly hit at third base. Picked up, and he is out at first. He moves the runner over to third base. It's a very close play. Riley Lacomo, 5-3. So somebody's been scouting uh, post-77 behind me, telling third baseman to watch out for the bunt. And that ball is he's, he's out at the plate, and I don't agree. Ball was hit to the shortstop and threw it home. To Ray Seymour. I thought he was in there. The replay will tell all when it gets into the editing room. So Ronan Bates is on first base, fielder's choice. Five to two. Jackson Horning has a chance to make some hay here. Some hitters have a little clock in their head. They wait five seconds, so the bat gets a little heavy holding up. They'll just call time. Coach Johnson is consulting with the home plate up, but I see what happened. Won't know what that conversation was all about until half inning. Horning hits a slow roller to Riley at short. He bobbles the ball. And has to eat it. Score that an error on Riley. When it's the other team, I am very generous with errors. Post 77, not so much. Gallette looks back, shortstop. Jumping a little bit over to second base. It's a strike call to Ben Thomas. Baines is a good runner. A lot of years to run the bases. So Thomas is going to call time. I was just going to call time for him. He's waiting too long in there for Gallette to stare in. Let spins off the back, does not throw. 
Rona may be getting in his head a little bit. Ben Thomas, gap hitter. That's a ball. Got some umpires behind me. The only one that matters is the one behind home plate. Thomas hits a gap here to right center or left center. He'd be running all afternoon. Ball. 21, two balls, one strike. I like the aggressive coverage by the end over middle infielders. Shortstop ran in front of Ronan and then cut in front of him. And now he's going back to, to cover the bag and getting himself in a position. So Galette's getting a little annoyed with Thomas calling time. Now there's a mound visit by Jim Imbriano. So he's uh, chastising Galette for something, told him to keep his mouth shut. But he's been coaching Legion ball for 20 years, so he's been around the block a few times. So the kids probably have a lot of respect for him, so what he says goes. Or he'll yank the pitcher right then and there if he's got one ready. All right, he's had his words of encouragement for Gallette. Two and one to Thomas. Second baseman kicking dirt over Ronan's way. Backpack safe. There's a pickoff move. Nine out of ten times there's no throw. Second baseman hanging around, hanging around, gets back to his position. Strike two and two, swing and strike. Second baseman clapping his glove, kicking some dirt. Ball foul back by Ben Thomas. I don't see anybody else on the end of a team with their shirt untied, untucked, excuse me. Runner steals and walks in. So all that nonsense, all that nonsense between the second baseman and the shortstop led to a steal as soon as he went, went to home plate. So Bates on third base. Ben Thomas got to get a ball through. The runner goes from first base. Ball is hit up the middle. And Horning is stopped at second, but that plate's a run. So the score is two to nothing. Ashland. Horning and Thomas are occupying second and first base, respectively. And Ben Pesson has a chance to open things up a little bit. That would have been a nice ball to steal on, a slow curve. Maybe Jackson can look in and sneak a sign or two. Pessa takes a healthy hack and fouls that one straight back. Count is 0-2. Johnson going to give the outright steal sign to Horning. is very quick. Or is he going to give the double steal? Neither. Ball hit to the shortstop. 
And he bobbles the ball, and everybody's safe. He put a good charge on it, but it popped out of his glove. So Pesson gets on. I'll give him a base hit for that. Up is Lewis Rossi with two out. Ashley in 77 has got the bases juiced. And they may be getting in the head of Gallette. Pesson seemed to uh, get in the shortstop's head the way he was running to third. He had almost a stutter step. Well, he has the right. He's got it right to the bases as long as he doesn't interfere. But the fielder has a right to the ball. So experienced umpires will call runners interference or defensive interference. Oh, there was no interference. I think the, the stutter step, the way he went back to avoid the ball. There's a ground ball to the left side. And that's going to go station to station. Lewis Rossi bringing his teammates to their feet. Not a 300 hitter, but he's a gutsy little guy. It's three nothing. Base is juiced. Tom Monzi up. Former Hopkins and Hurler. Playing club ball somewhere in college. Good for him. Nice kid, bright kid. Slow breaking ball for a ball. Well, I didn't see a hand go up, so I'm assuming it's a ball. This umpire's pretty good at throwing up his fingers. Good hack. Nice fastball by Gallette. Fouls it off. Safety swing. Count is one and two. Onsi pitched earlier against Andover, I believe, and a seven to four win. And he just got gassed. Can't lay off that high one. Most most hitters can't even at the major league level. So we'll head to the top of the fourth inning on WACA and HCAMP TV. On post eight from Andover. If Andover should be defeated, it's going to be a long ride home. Maybe there's a McDonald's on the way. Can't count your chickens before they're hatched. So we have Saliman up. Ball in the dirt. Blocked by Jewett. That's a textbook block. Have it knock off your chest protector and get out front. There's a ground ball over to Bates. Sunday hop over to Pesson. There's one down. Nope, oh, first baseman Como takes a strike from Babineau. Lefty lefty matchup once again. Ball just a little bit low. Coming into the sitting, Sean Babineau had only thrown 32 pitches. Very efficient. He's not happy about that. So he's going to manicure the mound a little bit. Get back on the rubber. Check his sign. Foul ball down the third baseline. Count is two and two. Little breaking pitch, full count. Boy, Como is a big kid. 
There's a ground ball to Pesson. Gets it on the backhand. Runs over to first base. And now there's two out. So we get the second baseman, Dillman. He struck out the first time. Or he singled the center, I'm told. Good thing I got a good book man in Steve Arena O'Leary. Nice Italian Irishman. That's a strike. That was the pitch to let it rip. But I'm not in the batter's box. So let these guys do their thing. There's a foul over my head. I got my helmet on, so no worries. No, no, get on that. There's a gr little ground ball. Hey, little confusion on that dribbler. Pesson went for it. Babineau went for it. Pesson had a back pedal, and he just dropped the ball. Here comes the D.H. Pena. So we'll keep an eye on Babino and we'll keep an eye on the runner. There's a big cut and miss by Pena. Little pickoff move. Ball's out of play. Just going to get first base. Ball was thrown away from the infield. That's one base. If it was thrown away from the outfield, they get two bases. So Babineau's going to kick himself. Maybe he got a little greedy. So there's a runner on second base in scoring position. Count is 1-0. And Jackson Horning over to Zach Pesson. Jack to Jack. Third out. So we're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning on WACA in HCAM in Hopkinton. We're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Gallette has thrown 56 pitches so far. Babineau only 46 to get through four innings. Sean Jewett to the plate. He might be in my one of my all-time, all-time favorites because of the way he plays. That's a called strike at the knees. Pitch is low. I think the coach was asking whether it was four or five to nothing. It's four, though. Is a fly ball to right field. Is there any sun to worry about? Nope, there's just a big airplane overhead. Clear skies. Here comes Brad Seymour. Is a ground ball to the first baseman. And Como beats Brad Seymour to the bag. Is a leadoff hitter, Jake Obed. Heading to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Says he's going to find his roommate by the end of the month. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Not a train wreck. There's a breaking ball up high. 1-0. Oh. There's a ground ball over to the second baseman. 
Flips it over to first. Gets a speedy obid. Three down. At the end of the fourth inning, heading to the top of the fifth. Jewett throws the ball down to second. Sean Babineau. Pitch count is 46, and he's not on a pitch count tonight. So no conflict, so he can run the table here. As long as he doesn't get in any trouble. Doesn't even take his eight pitch warm up. There's a base hit to right field by Medina. So I wish the Andover fans would get out of my ear, but they paid their money to get in. Babineau is going to watch two shuffle step lead over there by Medina. But that's right. All the uh, admissions. There's a strike poured in by Babineau. Babineau has got to keep in mind that he doesn't want to give up a base by throwing the ball away. But, but that ball is hit to center field to Seymour. He's under it. You heard Andover's third base coach yell back, so he was even fooled by... Babineau's move. He yelled for Medina to get back when he wasn't even going over. And that's a very experienced base coach. So it's Brian Guerrero takes a strike at the knees. Jewett will occasionally throw down a first base to back pick. Oh, <laughs> he made Guerrero look absolutely silly on that pitch. And they yelled back once again. They thought uh, Babineau was going to throw over. Like he did right there. And he was back in time. So he's just mystifying. It's a ground ball to first base. It's fair. Pesson had no chance to get the runner at uh, second base, so he'll just uh, take it himself. Three unassisted. Mike Riley, the third baseman. I might say the big third baseman. And there's a ball hit over the right field. That ball is foul. Good chase put on it by Ben Thomas, but hopefully Babineau will give Thomas a little breather out there as he had a run about 50 or 60 feet for that foul ball. Ashland infielders not challenging the runner at all. Rossi's going to be, there's a strike. Runner getting a healthy lead off. Spins off the back of the rubber, Babineau. No throw. Nobody there to throw it to. Just letting the runner know he's looking at him. And there's a very slow breaking pitch that's fouled off. To the right side by Riley. Babineau rubbing off the ball, maybe giving the runner at second base the death stare. I guess he's got this thing about base runners. Just doesn't like them. Even if they were former base, uh, former teammates. Is a ground ball to Horning? Throw to Pesson, and they get them. Riley hustled down the line, but Horning threw a seed to Pesson for the third out of the inning. We'll be back with WACA and HCAM television. We're heading into the bottom of the inning. 
It will be two, three, and four hitters. Bates, Hornung, and Thomas. Gillette throws 56 pitches so far. And Sean Babineau has thrown 57. The fastball fouled away. Oh, it's bottom of the five, bottom of the fifth, excuse me. Ronan Bates takes that ball and goes the other way with it. The second baseman stumbles, and the umpire calls him out. Oh, got to wait for the editor, Tom Nappy, to put that on replay. A lot of grumbling, and Coach Johnson is going to go out there and talk to the first base umpire, maybe ask from a little help from the home plate umpire. But that umpire was closest to the bag. He might not have had the best angle. But Coach Johnson got what he needed to get. Jackson Horning up in the three hole. There's a strike called. So I'm not quite sure whether the coach is calling pitches, strike two, or whether the, yep. Yep, the uh, Andover coach is calling us pitches for Galette, relaying him to the catcher. There's a ball in the dirt, blocked nicely by Schmidt. With most of these kids playing AAU ball and high school ball, they're sort of left on their own to call their own game. But this coach has been around for many, many years. So he may be old school. Foul ball over the third base side. Jackson Horning possesses really good power. And the ball's hit into right center field. The ball is caught by the right fielder. Got a little bit too much lift on that. Now there's two out. The collision play at first base, which we'll have to take a look at. And that ball hit to the right fielder by Jackson Horning. Ben Thomas, clean up hitter up. Ball's hit over to the left side. Shortstop's going to make a long throw, and he will not get him. Shortstop did a good job getting into the hole, but just didn't have the quite the gas in his hose to get the speedy Ben Thomas. Now he's going to face Zach Pesson, the first baseman. So Coach Johnson has a chance to get a runner in scoring position. He's flashing the signs over to Thomas. Big cut and a miss by Pesson. Catcher possesses a good arm. But Gallette could throw a it's fastball right there, one one he could throw a bender, which would allow Thomas some extra time to get in his second base. If he can sneak in and look for a sign. Runner's going. Ball's hit right back at the pitcher. And Pesson gets, gets down the first base line. There was a throw back over to second base as Thomas took the turn. So Cedric Gillette, love that name, Cedric. Um, he had a ball hit right back at him. It went towards the second base way. 
And Pesson is on first, and Thomas is on second. With two out. Lewis Rossi at the plate. Little dirt dog. Takes a hack. It's tough to lay off that pitch. It's also very tough. Second baseman is giving Thomas a look-see over there. Galette looks back twice. Throws. Curveball for a strike. 0-2. Oh, Coach Johnson looks a little perturbed. He may have given uh, Ben Thomas a signal of some kind. He didn't pick it up. Ball up high. One and two. Gillette still got a little bit of hump on his fastball. Rossi, good contact hitter. That ball came right at us. I don't know if it's going to hit me on the coconut or not. But I, I dove for cover. Now I'm angry at Lewis Rossi. We're almost taking my head off. But I think Thomas is going to go on this pitch. Up high. I was wrong. Coach Johnson flashing the signals over to Thomas. And he's taken off. Throw down to third base, and he is safe. But he was banged out. That was right in front of us. Another replay. We got to do a little slow motion replay. Absolutely safe, in my humble opinion. I don't know whether this guy is getting half pay today or full pay, but that was a horrible call. You agree, Todd? Half pay. All right, we're heading to the top of the sixth inning. We'll be right back in a moment. These, these iPhones, these things are beautiful. I got a call that I missed. During the action, Babineau takes his typical three pitches for warm-ups. Jewett throws it down. All right, we'll check. So, Kelly Asakos is up. The number three hitter, left fielder. Babado misses just outside. Tom Nappy's got some editing to do on that. F play over to first base where there was collision. That steal of third. He's got one other I can't recall right now, but once he gets his tape into the video room, he'll slow it down for you viewers. It's a broadcast of WACA Ashland and HCAM and Hopkinton. Ball outside. Count is two and one. Babineau's had a relatively easy time. Thus far, he's into the sixth inning of work. Ball low. Three and one. I think Coach Johnson's going to ride him all the way. He gets a free pass. Kaylee Osakos. Selliman, the right fielder. Went to the right side last time. Breaking ball just outside. And we'll see what the runner does over there. Doesn't present too much of a problem. Horning catches the ball, takes a look at first base for a potential tag. And there's one out. Nice play by Jackson Horning. 
It was his ball all the way as a shortstop in that Bermuda Triangle area where lots of bad things happen when the third baseman, the left fielder, and the shortstop converge. Sean is keeping those runners just pinned over there at first base. I don't think they dare get off now, being down four runs. No need to run into an out or get picked. That ball is caught by Jackson. Little humpback line drive. Two down. My broadcast partner is out at Fenway Park tonight. Probably sitting in the monster seats or something. Well, I'm here toiling doing this broadcast today, so I will alert him that it's four to nothing. Three. I think it's three to nothing, I'm told. That should be enough information for Tom Nappy. He could have turned down those seats, but he didn't. Runner at first base. Dillman at the plate. Babineau looks over, freezes the runner, pours it in for a strike. Now with two down, they definitely don't want to give up a run. There's a ground ball up the middle. Flipped. He had an easy flip there to Horning, but he went to first base and the runner's safe. There's the D.H. Pena. Pena. Yeah, he went. That called the ball. A Jew had asked for a little help on that. Count is one and one. Swing and strike. Babineau wants this one. Wants to get back in the dugout to get something nice and cold to drink. Check swing. Deuces are wild. And the ball's hit into center field. Seymour camps under it for the final out. And that's the end of the top of the sixth inning. We'll be right back with the bottom. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Ashland leading the Andover Warriors. Sort of a scary name, three to nothing. Cedric Gillette has thrown 80 pitches so far. So, Coach Joe Am Barino, I am Barino, I'm sorry, Joe. It is a bunt up the third baseline. It's barehanded and thrown into the dirt. Rossi's going to make it to second base. He's being held there. The right fielder picks up the ball. Rossi, but known to be a good bunner. As Steve Arena O'Leary let me know a little bit earlier in the game. So there's run and scoring position with the designated hitter, Tom Monsey, at the plate. So he struck out the last time on a high on a high fastball. It was tough to lay off. Swing and miss at a curve. Down in the count, 0 1. Glad has pitched a pretty good game. 
I think Andover is out hitting Ashley in five to four. I may be mistaken on that, but I'll get some clarification. But it only matters how many times you touch home plate. Bonzi can't lay off that letter high fastball. Gillette rearing back for a little extra. Beautiful night here at the ball game, ballpark. There's a ground ball over to the right side. It's into the right field. Rossi's held up by Coach Johnson, literally. Lewis made a hard cut there, and his feet came out from under him. That runner's at first and third. They're going to have a pitch runner for Anzi. Some discussion with the Ashland coach about whether you could pinch run for the DH and have him re-enter. So... Yep. I don't have the book on him, but he Coach has the book. He is small and he is fast. Well, Glett has yet to pick over to first base. And there's a very big lead by DePeron. Infield playing in, so they may just be giving him defensive indifference. Jewett. Calls time. Makes Gillette unhappy. But a big lead over there and a walking lead. And now they're in a pickle. This is going to be the throw to the plate. And he's going to be out. That's a fourth replay we got to see there. DePerrin walked down to second base. Trying to get himself in a pickle. The second baseman threw home. And he was called out at the plate. I just don't know what's going on. Second time they've been thrown out at the plate. Yes, that's my sentiments exactly. So Jewett has a chance to knock in De Peron with good speed. Ball inside. Gillette looks in, getting the signs from the catcher. Relayed to him by the manager. The parent really getting in Gillette's head there. Called strike, but Jewett. So no signal sent down to DePeron. If he's going to go, he's going to go on his own. There's strike two. Babineau has three batters to face at a minimum next inning to close this game out. Ball. Nice take by Jewett. He's showing some experience and patience at the plate. Not going for that sucker pitch. So the parent went back to the bag so as to not get doubled off. And he's frozen right there. Brad Seymour up. You don't want to take Brad for granted. Will DePeron, who was 
pinch running for Onzi, take off and steal third. Back over to second baseman, he's in safely. Galette's made two nice throws back to second base, but hasn't thrown over to first base. There's a ground ball slowly hit to the third baseman. It's thrown in the dirt, but scooped by the first baseman. And that's the end of the sixth inning. We'll be back for the top in just a moment. Okay, we're heading to the top of the seventh. Last chance for Andover, post eight. Jewett throws the ball down to Ronan Bates, flips it to Jackson Horning, over to Lewis Rossi, underhand to Sean Babineau. Sean's got three three runs to work with. There's a questionable call at home plate, but my intelligence tells me that even the runner admitted he was out. But we'll let uh, the editor figure out whether he wants to put it on replay or not. Seven, eight, nine up. Medina, the center fielder. Sorry, it's eight, nine, and one. So, count is two and zero. Oh. Things get a little tight when it's your last ups, and you could go home for the season. Babinell pours in a strike, two and one. But also fielders get a little tight too when the ball comes to them. There's a ground ball right back to Babineau. He's going to underhand it to Pesson, or he's going to take it all the way. Well, I don't know what you call that, showboating or just excitement or what, but he took that ball. He didn't want to take any chances with the ball being dropped, and he stepped on the bag. We will score that one unassisted. There's number nine hitter, the catcher, Schmidt. Strike. 0-1-1. There's the heater for strike two, 0 oh and 2. The Andover fans have uh, calmed down a little bit, less boisterous now. They've got two outs in which to make up three runs. It is a fastball by Babineau, probably the hardest one he's thrown all, all night. Just up high. 1 and 2, lazy breaking pitch, just outside. Two and two. You tell how bad Babino wants this. Get his team into the States. There's a pop up over to the right side. Jewett gives chase. Pessa gives chase. Ball's out of play. Count is two and two. Umpire signals for play. Babino winds, delivers. Slow breaking ball. Up the middle. Horning keeps it from head, heading into center field. Would have been a signal anyway, but you always want to knock down a ball when you can. <laughs> now, we'll see whether this runner at first base with the leadoff batter up. No, Babino doesn't like him. Nope. Ball low, 1-0. Oh. That's Brian Guerrero. Slow breaking pitch by Babineau in there for a strike, 1-1. One one. I just w won't believe that this coach will send that runner, run him into a second out. There's strike two poured in there. Guerrero just looked at that one. There's a fly ball foul out of play. So one of the Andover fans thought that was a fair ball, but uh, not by 20 feet.
So Guerrero has got a 2-2 count on him. Runner on first base. And he swings and misses at a nasty breaking pitch. Two down. I think Babineau smells blood. Mike Riley, the third baseman, is up. Big boy. One swing of the bat. He can get them within run, one run. Ground ball, Babino over to Pesson over to Babino. That's the third out. Ball game over. And in Ashland, post 77, will head to the state finals. And there's a mob scene on the mound. What an excellent effort by Sean Babino in the Ashland post 77. So that's a wrap from Ashland Middle School as the umpire runs away. The home plate umpire, that is. And that will do it for tonight's action. The final score is 3 to nothing. Ashland post 77. Set, he's the uh, left fielder tonight. There's the pick, and there he's done. See you later. Nasty pickoff move. We see at least one or two a game. Kid's a freak. Coach Johnson runs out of the dugout as he's chased down by post 77 players with the Gatorade bucket as Ashland completes the three nothing victory over and over to advance to the state tournament at Fino Field in Milford. Tom Nappy here to wrap up this huge win for post 77. Sean Babineau pitched a gem for post 77 as he pitches the complete game seven inning shutout he gave up seven hits and had four strikeouts. Post 77 took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the second. Tom Onsey sacrificed to score Zach Pesson. With two outs in the bottom of the third, Post 77 struck for two more runs. Ben Thomas drove in Ronan Bates with an RBI single to center field. And then Zach Pesson reached on an error and that was followed up by a Lewis Rossi single that scored Jackson Horning and put Ashland up three to nothing. And that would be the final run of the game as Ashland Legion post 77 takes down Andover three to nothing and advances to their first state tournament in a long while. Ashland finished the season three and 15 last year, but this year an unbelievable turnaround as they show they are among the best in the state and punch a ticket to the state tournament. For Larry Sacklad, Ben Butkus, Todd Carter, and the rest of our crew, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. The road continues on for Post 77. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.